Hi right, folks, it's Driver Films. Let's get into Driver Films again with another video. And it's similar to the uh, Katrina Stewart type one. It's another douchebag. Who doesn't like cars? That'll tell you about this. Um, I follow Alex Roy off. Uh, follow Alex Roy on Twitter and Facebook. He's a motoring journalist. Check him out. If you've not heard of Alex Roy in Gumball Valley. Anyway, and he mentioned a BuzzFeed blog about autonomous cars and Google cars and what have you. And in all honesty, I don't really go on BuzzFeed and their website. They've got a few YouTube channels, we've got in a few YouTube channels, but I don't really look at them anyway. I'm going to do it. It's, it's nothing special. Well, I don't think it is anyway. Anyway, um, he had to look at the article last night. It's by someone called Matt Hoonan, Matt with one T. So he, he sounds a bit douche already. Anyway, he's written this article, I'll, I'll link it below. Read the longest one, or so we'll check it later. Called Google's Cute Cars and the Ugly End of Driving. And I'll sort of read excerpts from this article. And it says, the thing about covering tech, especially for a long time, is that you have these moments where you really reach out and touch the future. They're there, but you get to the point where you can recognise them and you see the truly significant shifts. I'm going to miss bits out here because I don't want to get this issue too long. There's a lot of scepticism about self-driving cars and how successful they will be. About whether we really people really want to use them. About whether they're safe. But that is what you should know about autonomous vehicles. They're coming. Inevitably. Inexplicably, they're coming. Then he goes on to say on, on a Tuesday he went with a long of overdue journalists and rode in the prototype car. It looks like a clown car. <laughs> in all, it, it, it looks like it's like something in Toy Town, you know, that kind of thing. Something, something little toy you get your little baby, you know, get a kid to push on the car. But anyway, and uh, uh, Google built from the ground up and it's adorable. No, it's not, it's horrible. Only less weird looking in the company's fit of accesses whose cars are common lasers bottled all over the body. Well, they're just test mules, so. There's your little uh, thing out the window. Uh, part of the reason it looks precisely because Google did build it, or more precisely, have built it from the ground up. And they. It says Google had the chance to rethink the way a car should be configured if it was never going to be driven by a human being. So the prototypes look a, look a little weird. Anyway, so you get you get him, put on seat belt, sit next to a fellow passenger on a bench seat, and that's about it. You start the car, push the button, and two of you, with two of you, and it just goes. No steering wheel, gas, or brake pedals. Not even the proper dashboard, apparently, just display. Rooming cozy feels like riding the gondola. Oh. Yes, I've taken a few gondola rides up the side, up the side of the mountain, but you know, it's nothing special. And apparently, Google set up uh, a rooftop parking with loads of obstacles. Uh, apparently a man walked out in front of the car, bike, bicyclist, merged in front of us and in his he took a left turn, it slowed, it stopped. It turned corners, it was fun. Okay, perhaps it's fun for five minutes, I don't think I would like that kind of much fun for the rest of my life anyway. And one of the reporters compared it to a haunted house art ride at an amusement park and in all honesty it looked like the sort of car that would be in that. Apparently it's pleasant, you can get some reading done, sit back, have a drink, enjoy the ride, have another drink, the car's got it. Well, if you want to be a douchebag on the move, then, you know. I'm going to refer to him as a douchebag, because he sounds like one. What else does he say? First time I rode in a fully autonomous car, what really impressed me was the car saw something he could not. And he goes on to say that uh, it can see where you're headed, you know, it can detect some person about to run across the road. And it will slow down and stop if necessary. So, okay, there, there's benefits to this. And he goes on about how many miles the car's driven and loaded on, um, what have you. Now, here's a statement that, that kind of annoys me. This car is better than, better, it's a better driver than me, you, or any of us. So he's driven with everyone, has he? Has he been in passenger in my car? No, I won't let him in. Has he been a passenger or does he know what everyone's driving is like? That's an impossible thing to say. Yeah, some people drive like other dicks. 
Some people can't drive correctly at all. They have no idea the door's seen it. Oh no, crashing someone already. Fuck. Anyway, then he says, anything new like people are going to be concerned about it? And apparently, the uh, reporter from Australia said, how dare you mess with that relationship between car lover and their car? Which I, I, I can understand. I don't want to be part of this autonomous society, you know. We all got to be connected. I mean, I don't want Facebook knowing where the hell I am. It's not that I've got something to hide. I just don't want it to know where the hell I am, you know. GPS location switch is my phone anyway, so... Anyway, they'd be bored if they found, if they, um, if they found out where the hell I am. Because, oh, he's there, oh, he's there, oh, how boy, oh, how well. Anyway, um, he flaps on a bit. A lot of questions will be asked about self-driving cars, whether they be private, public owned. Will non-automated autonomous vehicles be banned? What about computer bugs, this, that, the other? What will it track, monitor? It's... Okay, they are valid questions, you know, you happen to a Google clown car, you know. What is it tracking? Is it saying, mm, okay, this person's going from this house to this pub, he should be going to work. You know. And, and, and he, he flops on saying about the benefits. I mean, okay, apparently, um... Cars are inefficient, planet and people killing each death machines. Self-driving cars, especially if they're operated as fleets, as you use when you need them, and summoning it Uber style, which I think some app in New York where you can summon a taxi anyway, will mean that we could have few vehicles per person, less traffic congestion, less pollution, and a far few vehicles produced per year. Thus, low in environment impact of production. And best of all, safer streets. Possibly, but how many manufacturers are going to go bust because they don't have to make so many cars? It, it's not going to work. And another thing he, he says so go fuck a tailpipe if you love cars so much. Your love for cars does not supersede the lives of 1.2 million people who die in automobile accidents every year. It's not more important than the energy savings we will get from not manufacturing 60 million or so vehicles every year. That's where most of the time I'll turn off, parked. I'm turned off and I'm parked here. So technically I'm, I'm, I'm saving the planet because I'm not killing people. That person in the car next to Port Master is going to be like, weird look, fuck it, I don't care. I just, I don't, I don't get that. It's... New tech comes so quickly now, and it's so much like it's feasible to wonder if it's real and fully transmit, transformative. So this is what you should know about technology behind self-driving autonomous cars. It's real, transformative, it's coming. Yeah. Not not just yet. In, in, in all honesty, it's... I hate this person straight away. He's, he just sounds like one of them... Douchebags who, who go goes to body, goes to Starbucks, have a half cap low cap cappuccino, what have you, with sprinkles on it or something. Reads a body book after being a douchebag while sitting in the window trying to be edgy and thinking, oh, I must be at one with technology, Ooh, I'm going to have a bionic eye, I'm going to be connected all the time. Yes, cars are getting more cleaner and fuel efficient, except if you drive a diesel Volkswagen, a new diesel Volkswagen. <laughs> they fucked that up, haven't they? But yeah, it's 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 daft to support and say that. Oh well, technology's coming with it. Come in, deal with it. You're gonna have to abandon your car. Deal with it. Is that a person I want to bloody punch? Yes, technology is coming. Um, they've got some good hybrids out there. You know, like the uh, the the McLaren P1, the, the Porsche 918, and the Laf I think the LaFerrari is. Yeah, I think the LaFerrari is one of these hybrids that are battery and petrol. But you know, it's it's not you, you can't turn on the sales to go fucking tailpipe if you love your car so much. You cannot suddenly stand there and demand everyone's got to abandon their cars and embrace this technology. I don't want to embrace in technology, it's handy, but I don't want to be connected all the damn time. Like I said on the phone this thing calls fuck so I can't get 3G signal. But that's a bonus because I can't have Facebook or Twitter pinging off all the damn time. In fact, sometimes I just I switch my phone off and just leave it. You know, it, it's good not to be connected. And I think that using Facebook all the time to chat to your friends, well, 
When was the last time you you spoke to your friends without using Facebook like Vungum or Paul? Just just go outside and speak to someone. It's all this technology is zeroing in, and one thing that does kind of scare me a bit. And it's a, and it's like creating Terminator. But what happens if it becomes self-aware? What happens if the computer is revoked? What happens if the computer crashes? Why are you giving your little Google clown car going down the street, and all of a sudden, picks a bug up somewhere. Someone hacks in. Because apparently someone's hacked into a, a Lexus in America to show how easy it was. I think it's a Lexus. What happens if that happens? You know, what happens if a bug, a glitch happens, and uh, you can't control it, and you can't, it doesn't detect the accident in front and knocks it, knocks some poor bugger over. Technology is all right for certain things, but it has to be a hundred percent reliable. And in all honesty, I'd rather stick with my car. Because it's probably going to be okay. You can't at no cost fully reliable, but I can, I can stick with my car. I can steer it around accidents. I can look after it. I can maintain it. And if it breaks down, it can be fixed. I'm not mechanically minded or electrically minded, but I think it's probably easier just to fix something mechanically than it is to plug in a computer and spend ages and try and find a fix to the update of the patch that failed because it crashed. So anyway, I'll, I'll leave the link down below. And also on that page, somebody put another link to uh, another web page. And the founder of Google bought his wife a Ferrari FK XX dash X something. A Ferrari race car basically. So um I don't think the Google Podulator clown car is coming just yet, Matt. And if as long as you keep spelling it with on to, you are really much of a douchebag, so you, you you carry on trying to be edgy in cost in Costa or Starbucks drinking your cappuccino reading the book, sitting in the window trying to look cool. To me, you always look like a douchebag. Anyway, as always, I'd like to know what you lot think. Comment below. Also, if you're new to this channel, I'd love to have you subscribe to keep updated with the next videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.